So in terms of child safety at Mary MacKillop, it's always been a priority for us. Just, just around student safety in the playground. Um, we've always talked about it, Mary MacKillop, if you see a need, do something about it. So that notion of safety, how we treat each other, is an important part of our school culture. So when child safety came out, it enabled us to build another level of conversation on that. I think we were well supported as a diocese in terms of the documentation that came out. It wasn't as if you had to invent anything. Um, it was there, it was just personalising it to, towards, your own school, to, towards your own school. So I didn't feel overwhelmed, um, but you had to make sure you are organised and managed it because it wasn't just about the documents, it was also about making sure people were aware of the documents. We looked at the staff code of conduct, both with the staff and the school board. They went through it, they looked at it. We then looked at the most efficient way that we could get staff to um, sign off on that code of conduct. So all the staff uh, through a Google form, the staff code of conduct is um, published through a Google form, and then they all sign off on it. So I get a database for the staff code of conduct agreements. And then through our VPASS, um, when parents sign in, they also go through the code of conduct. Uh, when it first came out, we had a school camp and parents came on the school camp. So we actually sat down and stepped through the code of conduct with those parents to make sure they were fully aware of what they were stepping into. It sounds logical, but by stating it um, in terms of the expectations, it just means you've set a benchmark for expectation. So I think it was worthwhile. In terms of being specific around the code of conduct, it gives us a consistent language across the school, both for our staff and for our parents in terms of what do they actually mean. Um, it also gives us, enables us to create conversation around those areas because there is a consistency always there through the language. There's no grey area, it's very clear. So in terms of communicating the code of conduct as well as all the other child, child safety standards, we have um, our a child safety part of our bulletin which is published weekly. Um, and we also have it as a standing item in our staff meetings. So there's always a spot for child safety issues. Sometimes that's as simple as, have you completed the staff safety code of conduct? Other times it's going through information which is contained within the Sale Diocese documentation on CompliSpace. Um, and also we have all the standards and attached documentation within our school intranet, which is again using a Google site as a means of communication with staff. So we have a dedicated space on our intranet just for child safety and it allows me to upload all the current documentation um, that gets published so staff are aware of it. I think our school community has embraced the notion of child safety because it's always been a community that values child safety very highly. Um, this therefore it's given us again an opportunity to speak about it, to talk about what it means. Um, Again, every parent is always concerned about the, the extreme aspects of child safety. So for them it's reassuring to know that as a school community we are looking at those, whether it be through what we publish, through the newsletter, what we're talking about, but even looking at how we build that into our curriculum here as part of our inquiry cycle. Um, because we're talking about it, obviously what we need is if a child is feeling at risk, we need a safe place for them to talk about it. Uh, our wellbeing leader in our school is very good at meeting, with, meeting the children's needs and creating a safe spot where they can talk. My role is wellbeing learning adjuster leader and uh, an important part of that is that I um, work with the teachers on how best to meet the children's needs, be it socially, emotionally and of course academically. Our staff know that both uh, the wellbeing leader and myself are there not just to manage the discipline but also to manage the student safety in our school. So it's about building trust and relationships with the children so they know that they can come and talk to us at any time. We're there as a support for the children if there is a disclosure um, but also to follow up on any um, specific requirements uh, that need to be had. So our wellbeing leader is full time, she works with both uh, funded children but also works with children who are at risk socially and emotionally. And uh, so that's, that's a nice place to be. It's also nice that we keep building that relationship with our children. I talk to them, my office isn't just where you come to get into trouble. It's a, sp it's a safe spot where you can come and talk. Mapping children's progress and how they're feeling has a huge impact on the learning because if a child comes to school um, upset for whatever reason, unless that need is attended to, they're not in a good space to be. 
um, thinking about their learning. I believe our children know they can be heard. Um, we, we have lots of conversations with the children one-on-one -on -one, and they're certainly very willing to, not to, it's not just about sharing concerns, but also sharing ideas and helping build the, the culture of the school by sharing what they think is a good idea. And I think that it's, it's about creating that culture all the time, not just for those times where they're feeling at risk. So I believe we have a student population that is prepared to speak to us. The strategies and the atmosphere that we've created helps them identify that, yeah, we, we can go to these people and talk. We can talk to our teacher. We can talk to Mr. Wands. We can talk to Mr. Ladonichu. And they, we believe that they know that. Our approach is always about um, harm minimisation. It's about making sure we put in the procedures prior to uh, an episode so that our children can identify when they're at risk or our staff can identify when children are at risk prior to an event.